her friend at the Ganges, in India, where some of the most poor live. There are small and decrepit apartments. These dwellings contain families of eight or so, well beyond the capacity recommended for living comfortably. The people behave strangely. Normal social behavior is rare. Some would call their demeanor visceral. When photographer Andrew Ulrich came to India in 1998, he was assigned to Mumbai's poor district. Being a poor freelance photographer, he hadn't much money for living expenses, and unfortunately, the broken complex seemed a better alternative to the streets. The entrance was poorly lit. He inquired about staying. The price was agreeable. The manager led him to a lone hallway. The doors were either shut or boarded up. At the end of the hallway stood a young girl. She was dressed in a beautiful white gown. Her hair was well groomed and her complexion kept. She was also not malnourished, which considering the area was unusual. Andrew had not seen a single person who was thin and sickly looking. He smiled and waved to her. She came running down the hallway. She possessed an exuberance that he'd not seen in his visit to this section of the city. He asked her name. She spoke broken English. What he could barely make out was that she was going to see her friend at the Ganges tomorrow. He snapped a picture and politely dismissed her. She ran down the hallway and disappeared. Later that night, Andrew slept with one eye open. At every creak and thump, he'd jump up and face the door of his cramped sleeping compartment. His backpack and tripod jammed against the hinges did little to ease his anxiety. He clutched his knife and hoped for the morning. As he lied, planning the next day's events, he could swear he heard children laughing outside his room, running up and down the hallway. The morning had finally come. He had barely slept at all. He stretched and yawned, and still he had the memories of the young girl and the sound of children laughing he'd heard from the night before fresh in his mind. He shook them from his thoughts and gathered his gear. As he turned back from locking his door, he spied the girl down the hallway still clad in white. He waved, and instead of coming to greet him, she stared and slowly pulled back around the corner until she disappeared. He shrugged his shoulders. Andrew made it to the Ganges about midday. The sun beat down on him. He looked towards the dock and beheld the scene. There was a woman crying. He rushed over to see what was wrong. She was sobbing uncontrollably. He asked what had happened. The woman confided to him that her daughter went to the Ganges this morning and drowned herself. It was the girl from last night. He stumbled away in shock. He wanted to forget these past 24 hours. About three days later, he was on a plane bound for the US. While on assignment, he managed to get some of his film developed. He sorted through the various pictures until he came upon a familiar face. It was the girl smiling in the picture he took in the poorly lit hallway. This had forced him to use his flash. The picture had cast her shadow on the wall. Next to her was a tall, pointed shadow of unnatural dimension. Andrew felt a chill go down his spine.